And let's start studying some of the common willows you might find if you're an outdoor lover. Um, I'm doing this channel mostly for people that hike and canoe and kayak and maybe go hunting or mushroom hunting or fishing of the plants you can find, the trees you can find where you partake in those activities. There's a lot of ornamental willows and willows that are um, from other parts of the world that have escaped. And I'm not going to try to do those right now, at least. I'm trying to concentrate on, on native plants at this point with this channel because there's a lot of them and it's going to take me a few years to get them all. But as you come up the uh, Ohio Valley, from the lower Ohio Valley, you, well, let me say that the other way. As you come down the Ohio River and the tributaries, you get more meandering streams in the mid and lower Ohio Valley. This land is flatter and the streams meander more and it creates great habitat for willows. Willows will grow anywhere there's, they can have wet feet and full sun, especially the black willow. The sandbar willow here actually does not have wet feet much of the year, but it has wet feet when it has wet feet and it actually gets flattened and pushed down during flood events. So this is a, a sandbar here along the East Fork of the White River in Jackson County, Indiana, and this bank here is covered with sandbar willow. And it's eight or 10 feet high. It is more of a shrub than a tree. The guidebook says it can get to 20 feet, but usually it's more this shrub form with lots of uh, root suckers coming out. So this one plant may have hundreds of uh, sprouts that have come up over the years. And it stabilizes these sandbars. In the background is some full-size black willows, which I'll have to film at another point on this paddle. I'm in the canoe today. But they reach full height if they get enough sun and don't get shaded out by the other trees. So there are some along here we can study as well. But let's start with this sandbar willow. The leaf is very narrow and these ones here have all got teeth along them and that leaf there is about as long as my index finger but no more than a quarter to three-eighths of an inch wide with little teeth teeth along the way and it's paler on the bottom than it is on the top it's definitely a a softer shade of green almost a bluish green on the bottom and the bark is often green and as these trees get older, it becomes more of a striped green and brown. I don't have any of those here to look at. These are all pretty young saplings. This sandbar is probably fairly new. It has been formed by shifting currents in this river. And the sandbar willow follows these sandbars as they move around, especially during flood events. The sand can move quite a bit. Here's one here that's actually still getting started. Just a little sprout right here. So this is how Mother Nature keeps these banks from washing away too much. But we'll get to the black willow in a few minutes. I can't get to those ones behind this sandbar. But this is our sandbar willow, and it's common along these meandering streams. On a warm July day, these uh, black willows provide a little extra shade along the East Fork of the White River here. I'm just around the bend from where I filmed those sandbar willows. And um, this particular bank here has probably had a little more time for the trees to grow up. And we've got some taller trees and many of them are black willow. The bark, as you can see in the foreground here, It's got a lot of flakes and almost ridges. I wouldn't call them furrows. They're more flakes that come off the bark. And those ones in the sun back there might even be a little easier to see. So this is ideal habitat for black willow to be growing in in a natural environment that's not man-made. I often see it growing in swales and ditches that are man-made that have uh, moist soil year-round. Because these plants create like a dandelion type seed that will blow just about anywhere. And if there's habitat that's not being maintained by mowing and is fairly wet, it will grow in the ditches and swales all over the places where I spend my time in the mid-Ohio Valley. But many of the streams where I live are fast flowing and don't have these oxbows that are creating the right habitat for black willow. So I rarely see it along the Little Miami River, a little bit more along the Great Miami River. Um, but the faster flowing streams that have a gradient of five or 10 feet per mile just kind of rush along and don't create 
the right habitat for these trees. These, these willow seeds, when they do land on the ground, are like a dandelion seed. And all they need is some open soil and some sun, and they can take right off. And as long as the other trees don't grow faster than them, they will become full-size trees. But they cannot tolerate the shade of other trees. So you often find this black willow growing on these sandbars, and they're the first trees to come in. And as the forest matures and you go back from the bank a little, you start finding the box elder, the silver maple, and the cottonwoods. And I've got the leaf a sprig of this black willow I snapped off here. It has long leaves, similar to that sandbar willow, but they're shiny on top, and they're not that pale green underneath. So the underneath is almost the same color as the top. And I'm going to save this branch, and we'll get another sprig of sandbar willow to do a direct comparison. I don't see any growing right here, but we'll make another stop along this canoe trip here. To study this tree in more detail but it's a common tree in the right habitat and in the lower ohio valley and the slower moving streams of the mid ohio valley and all around the mississippi river it's a very common tree so uh, this is the black willow and let's continue studying two of the native willows to the ohio valley and parts of the appalachians and lower great lakes where there's the right habitat, certainly in the lower Great Lakes, we've got willows along the Great Lakes and um, the Appalachian Mountains, maybe in the lowlands. So um, I've done two clips, one on sandbar and one on black willow, and we've got them both right here on the next bend in the east fork of the uh, White River, the east branch of the White River um, in Jackson County, Indiana here. So let's take a look at both, and that'll make it real easy to see the subtleties between these two. Sandbar willow, like I said in the first clip, doesn't get that tall, but some of these are 15, 20 feet high. But you know, we've got a black willow much taller in the background, and it has sent out some roots. And it could be easily mistaken for sandbar willow because of its height, but this black willow to my left here has actually got some um, root suckers or sprouts coming out over here, just next to the sandbar willow. But as you can see, this bark... It's almost a brownish red. Guidebook says orange. I'm seeing more purplish um, on this younger growth. And when I come up to the sandbar willow, it's mostly green. Maybe some of the older branches might be a different color, but everything I'm seeing here is pretty much green. So that's one subtle difference. The leaves are about the same size. The sandbar willow has a rougher edge, bigger teeth. So I've got the sandbar willow to the top of the screen here with some larger teeth. And the teeth on this black willow are much smaller. Almost like the size of a hacksaw for the, um, the teeth on a hacksaw for the black willow and the teeth on a regular wood cutting saw for the sandbar willow. And it may not show up well in this video, but the back side of this sandbar willow is a lighter green than the top side. And this um, black willow is much shinier on the top side than the sandbar willow. And also, it's not as pale on the bottom side. But I think for me, it's more the color of that twig and the bottom of the leaf and the size of the teeth that are really giving this away. Because where the two habitats overlap and the two trees overlap, you can get both growing right next to each other. They could be confused. But this is on the inside of an oxbow here. So this is new sediment that is open, open for business. And these dandelion type seeds that blow off these willows can land on these sandbars and take over. And like I said in the last clip, once the other trees get established, these willows are pretty much out of luck. They need full sun to keep growing. Some of them will grow towards the water and the branches that are under the shade of the maples and the other trees actually die off. And I'm going to continue commenting on where you can find these black willow trees. And the black willows are the, uh, is the willow tree that gets full size if given the opportunity. The sandbar will not. And here's some that are again leaning towards the water, not because of the weight of the branches, but because they need full sun and 
where these silver maples have uh, stole the show. They cannot compete. They just grow towards the sun instead. And I'm going to show you that right here. This willow here is actually leaning down in the river. And it could have been undercut and fallen into the river. Or it may have grown sideways to keep getting full sun here. There's one right behind me here with the same form. So, um, could have been both reasons. But, um... I'm seeing a lot of these growing towards the river and actually leaning towards the river for that reason. And maybe they do get too heavy to hold themselves up, but the tree lays down and the branches start growing up again. So they don't give up without a fight. And um, boy, real pretty trees, a nice soft green and a gentle texture, which contrasts with these um, sycamores and maples. This is our black willow.